Thank you, Dumby. Now, I'm a muggle, but I can see the appeal in attending Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. There's spells and butterbeer and Accio. Ooh, wands and the constant threat of death, it all just sounds so magical. But of course, I'd have to get to Hogwarts first, which means passing through a very special wall in King's Cross Station in London. Now, I can't use magic, so what are the chances that I could pass through platform nine and three quarters? Platform nine and three quarters is the platform that Hogwarts students have to pass through to board the Scarlet Steam Engine, the Hogwarts Express. To passers-by, it's just a brick wall, but to magic users, it's a portal. Running through looks more or less like when superheroes phase through walls, and there is some science to that as we've covered before, but the Harry Potter universe is explicitly magic. Without magic, would you have a hope of getting through? Okay, before we get to Hogwarts, let's sort out what we're dealing with here. <laughs> nerd! Nerd. Net. You are a nerd. Yep. I already knew that. Okay, how could you move or phase through a wall like wizards and witches do? Well, that sounds to me like a job for quantum mechanics, more specifically, quantum tunneling. In classic physics, if a particle or object doesn't have more energy than some barrier, then it can't go over it <laughs> or through it. <laughs> but in quantum physics, the same physics just way better at describing the smallest scales in the universe, there is a non-zero chance that this happens. 10 points to oh, oh, yeah! <laughs> Butterbeer! That tunneling happens because quantum mechanically speaking, matter can behave like a wave. This idea can be really hard to wrap your head around, at least it is for me, but at the smallest scales, matter can behave like a wave, but not like particles bouncing up and down like they're on an ocean or something. No, matter is like that ocean. And like an ocean, matter's so-called wave function, denoted by psi here, which looks an awful lot like a trident, extends out in all directions to describe all the possible locations you could find some particle of matter in if you went looking for it. If a particle hit a barrier, no matter the size of the barrier, there is always some non-zero chance that you will find its waves on the other side. Now, those chances may be practically negligible because the longer a particle has to tunnel through some barrier, it exponentially decreases the probability wave here, but they are always non-zero. And they'd be non-zero for a human-sized particle as well. Come on, not fair. I know this all sounds very esoteric, but without quantum tunneling, you and I probably wouldn't exist. The core of our sun, compressed by gravity and fueled by the breath of the early universe, has a temperature of 15 million degrees Celsius. Now you might think that this temperature is what causes particles inside the sun to get close enough to fuse and undergo nuclear fusion and thereby create the heat and light that helped create life on Earth, us. But this is mathematically not enough temperature for this to happen. In fact, the only reason why the sun continues to burn is that the core has enough particles in it that at least some of them will have overlapping wave functions and then those particles will be able to quantum tunnel into each other and continue the nuclear fusion reaction. Otherwise, the energy barriers inside of the sun at this temperature would keep these particles apart forever and then the sun would die, and then we would die. Hi. Ooh, 150. But even in the sun, the chances of one quantum tunneling event occurring are like winning the Powerball lottery three times in a row. And so, while your chances of running at and running through platform nine and three quarters are non-zero, they're also quite low. Oh. Oh. Yes. Oh. All right, I'm about to hit you with a lot of math, but stay with me, okay? Revelio, Quatio, ooh. 
It's all right here, all on the wrist. Now, I consider myself a non-dum-dum, but you need at least a few semesters or a lot of free time to start wrapping your head around quantum tunneling equations. This is Schrodinger's equation. It's fundamental to quantum mechanics. And I got that help from someone very special. Cool! No, it's, it's not the bird. It's PhD cosmology student Sophia Nasser from UC Irvine. She gave me the idea for this episode when she tweeted out the chances of a human-sized particle moving through, phasing and tunneling through a wall. Now, I contacted her and she pointed out to me that if you consider a very simple barrier and a human-sized particle, like a proton with human mass, then Schrodinger's equation stupefies down to just this. The probability of us moving through a barrier like platform nine and three quarters is just exponent raised to negative two times our wave number times the width of the barrier. Again, this is all pretty dense. So if you're interested, you should read up on it. I have birds deliver my research to me. <laughs> so let's follow Sophia's lead. Expanding this equation a bit, the probability that we are gonna run through platform nine and three quarters is going to be equal to E raised to negative two times the wave number, which is just our momentum, mass times velocity, divided by Planck's constant, itself divided by two pi, all that multiplied by the width of the barrier. Now, at the time of filming Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Daniel Radcliffe was probably around 30 kilograms based on his age. And if he ran at the platform at jogging speed, let's say 15 kilometers per hour, and the width of the barrier was the width of a single brick, maybe 92, millimeters, then the chances that he would phase through that wall without magic are roughly equivalent to one over E raised to the 10 raised to the 35. It's so small because of Planck's constant here. I'll get to this in a second, but I think you can see that for larger particles, the chances of quantum tunneling are almost vanishing. Ho oh. ho! I'm gone. Did I go? Before I try to explain to you just how small one over e to the 10 to the 35 is, a comparison. At our scale, human scale, the chances of quantum tunneling are very, very low. But at smaller scales, they are good enough that we can expertly manipulate them in our technology. So right here is a very basic outline of a transistor in a flash drive, like you would find in a USB stick. I keep a lot of stuff in there. What makes this special is that it has a so-called floating gate that is separated from all the electrical conducting stuff by a thin layer of material. Electrons cannot get into this floating gate because there's no pathway for them. But if you apply a voltage in another gate of the transistor, suddenly these electrons will have enough energy to quantum tunnel into the floating gate. And now since electrons are there, computers can read this electron difference as a zero or a one, the basis for information in computers. And the cool part is that if you turn off all the power, all the voltage, these electrons stay in this gate because they can't quantum tunnel back out. That's what makes flash drives so useful. But you're not a flash drive, are you, Harry? Woo! Like electrons in a flash drive, you have a chance of quantum tunneling through some material and getting to the Hogwarts Express. But I can't actually show you how small that chance is. What are you doing? Let's look back at the probability of us passing through platform nine and three quarters. One over e to the 10 to the 35. Now some perspective here. e to the 10 to the one is one in 22,026. Now you may think the jump from one to two here isn't that much, but this number is closer to 2.7 times 10 to the 43rd. 20,000 quadrillion septillion. I think you can see where this is going. 
There are eight times 10 to the 67 different ways to shuffle just a single deck of ordinary playing cards. Akio cards! Thank you, this is empty. This, this number is so mind warpingly large that there are more ways to shuffle a single deck of playing cards than there are kilograms of matter in the entire observable universe. Chances are no one on earth in history has ever shuffled a deck of cards into the same order. And this number is eclipsed by just e to the 10 to the 2.2. My Patronus did nothing. e to the 10 to the 35 is a number so large that it's larger than the estimated total number of elementary particles in the entire universe, 10 to the 80. It's a number so large, it's larger than smart boy Carl Sagan's estimation of how many neutrons it would take to fill the entire universe's volume, 10 to the 128. This number is so large, and therefore one over it, the probability so small, that not only do I have not enough time in this video to write out all of its digits, I wouldn't have enough time in my life to write out all of its digits. I would die before doing so, and then the universe might die via heat death before anyone could write out this number in full. Your chances of running through platform nine and three quarters are so, so small, I literally cannot show you in full. It's ridiculous. No, oh, but it's not as scary now, because it's a kitty. No. Given these incredible numbers, it's still not explicitly impossible for you to do what it looks like wizards and witches are doing at platform nine and three quarters and phase through it. It's just horribly impractical the best kind of impractical. It would take you in your attempts to quantum tunnel through that platform longer than the hypothesized end date of the universe to have just one successful attempt to approximate what you're seeing. So maybe what the Ministry of Magic does, if we're trying as best we can to relate this to real physics, maybe they first identify magic users and then ugh, imbue them with some sort of property through magic that makes their entire body as massive as an electron. If the spell did that and reduced the width of the barrier to something closer to the scales of quantum mechanics, like one femtometer, which is much, much less than one nanometer, then the chances that a wizard or witch would quantum tunnel through platform nine and three quarters gets closer to 99%. I mean, given none of this is really accomplishable with real world physics, but hey, we are talking about Oh, oh, it's happening! Oh, the train's so cool! So, you could actually run through Harry Potter's platform nine and three quarters. Quantum mechanics is saying there's a chance, but that chance is so vanishingly small that I cannot show you in full how small that number is. The universe would end before I was done. Now, it may sound like I'm downplaying the coolness of science in the face of magic here, but I'm not. Think about it this way. The way that everything is, the way the universe works, allows for the weirdness that is quantum mechanics. Superposition and superconductivity and teleportation and phasing through walls. This is kind of the magic of reality because science. Yes, I know it would be a lot easier to just take a jackhammer or some kind of explosive and get through the platform nine and three quarters, but then that kind of defeats everything that we're seeing in the movie. And I know we're trying to approximate magic with science, but that's what good science does. It extends the imagination of what's possible in this universe. <laughs> So don't at me. Thank you so much for watching, Sam. I'd like to give a big shout out to Sophia Nasser, uh, who helped me a lot with this episode. Quantum mechanics 
is confusing. Wouldn't you know it? And she's very, very smart and a great communicator of science. So go follow her on Twitter at Astro Party Girl Party with an I. If you want more of me, go check out Musquatch back on Nerdist.com or go to Project Alpha at ProjectAlpha.com and sign up now for a free 30-day trial and then you will get this show two days earlier than everyone else. And follow Because Science and me here. We'll talk. I'll mostly just send gifts at you, but I'm there. <laughs>